After a week of breakout stars at quarterback, is everyone overthinking this sh Not everybody is a rocket surgeon. You know what I mean? Or was week nine just any given Sunday? When we add up all those inches, that's going to make the f difference between winning and losing. Yeah! Week 10, Football Nation, now. Nate Dog, what's good? And glad, unlike Bill Belichick, you got your shirt on, my friend. Yeah, but you know, I, I still got to work out because my back muscles aren't popping like his. You know what I'm saying? Was <laughs> was that the trapezoidus in the in the dim oh. toy to do to miss? I'll be your oh, trapezoid. Oh. Come on and wind me up. <laughs> <laughs> he was jacked. Yo, he's jacked. And one thing we do know, if, if his team's not working out, Bill Belichick is. <laughs> I just, I want to. I want to get, I'm looking it up on the computer, but 71 years old, my dude. Yo, if my, if yo. my back or upper body looks like that at 71, I'm good. Hey, you know what it is, man? He's doing a lot of lifting over there, man. Oh, it's yeah. gotten real heavy since Tom <laughs> Freddie left. No disrespect, Bill. You know I love you. I'm just yeah. saying. You're yeah. looking good. Yeah, I, me too. I'm saying the same thing. All right, I want to talk quarterback, speaking of Bill and Tom, but not not the pretty boy Tom Brady, NFL okay. hype machine type dudes. Okay. Dudes shooting their shots while other coaches, like, stubbornly hang on to something that's not working. I mean, so many Ooh. teams pour so much money, so much draft capital, so much work. Okay, okay. Their... Can, can I cut you off? Because you're yes, my brother. Of you know course what I'm saying? you can. Of we, course you can. We, we, That's how we... We're on the same page. It's like yes. I can see through that beautiful melon of yours <laughs> right into your brain. Okay. So let me guess. Uh, you're going to bring up maybe what C.J. Stroud is doing in Houston and looking at the Carolina Panthers who have seen Bryce Young struggle throughout the year. Uh, because C.J. Stroud... In Baker Mayfield's words, a guy he just beat who Baker Mayfield played a good game in that matchup, mm. Baker Mayfield said he doesn't look like a rookie to me. He looks like a veteran quarterback. So that's high compliment, high praise from a guy who has been through the ringer and has been on a few different teams. But C.J. Stroud is one of those guys that you might say, how did he slip by the grasp of teams that had a chance? I, I am right there with you, my brother. And then mm. are you thinking about another guy, maybe Josh Dobbs, who is – an unlikely of hero given the circumstances as he lands in Minnesota. What did you think about one, just getting there, getting thrown in the lineup and then winning the game? Okay. So this, I don't, I was going to ask you what's harder. And I love how you like mental, like you, uh, the, the mentalist, like right into the, what's that guy that's <laughs> been going in, <laughs> going into <laughs> yeah. Oz, 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 Oz. With, the, with the Bengals. Yeah. Um, I was going to say what's harder, C.J. Stroud going for 475 and no interceptions or Josh Dobbs. Like, I mean, he's doing his cadence with the offensive line on the sidelines because he's never practiced. I know he is literally, and I often say it as a joke, a rocket surgeon. He's a <laughs> rocket scientist and like this. But that seems, yeah. and you can you can correct me, that seems to be one of the hardest things that I've ever seen pulled off at that level. Yeah, you know, initially when you phrase the question, I immediately wanted to say, well, let's give CJ CJ Stroud credit because he's a rookie, he's he's thrown into the flame, new system, and really nobody has counted on this offense to be as good as they've been, let alone a rookie being mistakeless out on the field. Yeah. But like you said though, you have a guy that just joined the team and he is the backup behind the backup. And in his mind, he's thinking, I'm going to sit on the sideline, watch this game from a bird's eye view, and then maybe a few weeks in, get a chance to play. But if the young fellow, if the young fellow plays well, I won't get on the field all year. He got thrown in there and he looked like he has been playing with the team forever. It's one thing to make a few plays, get the win. But you know what the X factor is, the variable after that game was over, was how the team responded. It wasn't like, oh, we lucked up. It was almost like we found our guy. And that's strange to say because, one, they have Kirk Cousins. Um, two, he's the third string who just got there. And three, more importantly, he wasn't supposed to play that well and let alone be heroic in it. He didn't just lean on other guys to make plays. I mean, this dude is, you know, exp expanding the play with his legs. 
scoring touchdown as a runner. I just feel like Josh Dobbs and what he did, we'll be talking about that for quite some time. And I hope it's not one of those stories that comes and goes because it's truly incredible. Okay, so, so five and four Saints, five and four Vikings. Like, Minnesota's right there. There's, the, like, guys were telling him what they were running. Like, they were telling him the routes that they were going to run in the huddle as the play call came in. <laughs> like, that is yeah. insane. That, that- but doesn't that look? I, I don't want to. I don't want to oversimplify things, and I don't want to be that guy that shows up and and l- allows people to go home and say, "See, Nate said it's not that easy. It's not that hard. See, Nate said football isn't complex." Because the one I'm about to say could could cause people to take that away from this. I will say this though: there's something to be said about not knowing everything and having the whole phone book thrown at you when you're a quarterback. There's something to be said about playing on pure instinct there's something to be said about a little playground football and that's what he was doing so of course justin fields football, remember remember exactly. what justin fields was talking about yeah that's what that's, he's talking he said about too and many he got voices, too many people yeah. and yeah. he got roasted and some yeah. of the some of our favorite highlights throughout the year are from quarterbacks that improvise right so i just hope that this isn't something that happens this week and then it gets over complicated for him as a quarterback right. allow him to still have that same type of freedom because you know what Maybe they haven't played with that type of freedom. And to, and to answer your question, yeah, they're right in it. They're in the thick of it. Justin Jefferson is back to practice. So what happens when they get one of the most, if not the most dynamic receiver in the game added onto this roster with all of this juice? And now it's a good position. Last year they went from the Vikings were that team with the great record. They should win the Super Bowl or else this season is a dud. To now, you know what? There's no way they're winning the Super Bowl. They'd be lucky if they make the playoffs. Sometimes it's better to play under that energy because nobody expects anything. You're just sneaking up on people and punching them in the mouth. Right. Um, so the Texans get the Bengals. Joe Burrow's yeah. back, but now the wideouts seem banged up. Um, oh. I, they're, they're like the Bengals are a good football team. I just don't know if they're going to catch the break. And like, lo and behold, if the Texans get a win in Cincy, like that seems like a big kind of matchup quietly yeah listen a a few weeks ago that wouldn't even come out of your mouth you know the Texans get a win in Cincy especially with the way that we saw the Bengals playing but I'm convinced that the only thing that can beat the Bengals is a phenomenal Patrick Mahomes or the injury bug it's one or the other you know if they're healthy I'll put them up against anybody Um, but right now without two of their dynamic receivers being banged up I mean, we'll, we'll see how this offense has a flow because we know when Jamar Chase is healthy and what he does on the field, it just opens up this offense. It makes everybody better. The wide receivers start making plays. Nixon is running around like uh, Corey Dillon reborn in a Cincinnati Bengals jersey. So for me, I just I, I think if there's any time to get the Bengals, it's when they're banged up. Right. And to be honest, there's a few teams that I wouldn't want to face right now. The Texans are one of them. The Texans are a team. I just. They're so young, so hungry, and D'Amico Ryan has these guys believing that they could run through a brick wall. Another team is the Jags because they're playing so damn well and nobody cares. Like, they're another team that's just like, all right, keep keep saying that we're not as good as you think we are, and, and we'll show you on game day. Yeah, without a doubt, San Francisco, uh, Jacksonville, another big game yep. this weekend. But I want to yep. continue along the, the conversation around – the quarterbacks, because mark my words, and I've been in TV long enough, you can tell by my hairline, the contrast between Antonio Pierce and the Raiders busting out by going to Aiden O'Connell and the Jets sticking with Zach Wilson will be all over the Sunday night broadcast. Like, how much longer can Robert Salah keep throwing Zach out there? I think you're going to have to do it the rest of the year because what's the better option? I mean, yeah. as much as Trevor we would like to see, right, as much as yeah. we would like to see what Trevor Simeon can do, wouldn't you want a guy that can at least call the right play and put everybody in the right position? Now, the the most pressure is on the quarterback just to make the right read and the right, right play. We don't know if Trevor Simeon has a hold of the playbook. Listen, not everybody is a rocket surgeon. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can't all be Josh Dobbs and, and pick up the offense, even though Trevor Simeon has been there much longer. Um, and to get him back to a couple of things you said first, I'll address what uh, Antonio Pierce is doing with the Raiders. Like, 
that's just fire, bro. Like he came out and said they were asking him why why did the practice squad guys line up on the sideline? He's like, what do you mean? Like I know that's not tradition. I've been on teams where they don't do that. These guys have been busting their butt getting this repair, offense, defense, special teams. And the practice squad guys, if you're on the team, you're part of the team, you're on the sideline. And that little bit right there, that is going to lift this team up and they're going to play much better than who they are. And then the first thing you said before setting up all this, the only question I have for you is, what hairline? And I mean that with all love. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. So I really do. <laughs> remember, remember when Jerry still had the cornrows and they started? Back? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, not Jerry with the cornrows back <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, I think I should start doing it. Maybe I should grow it out. I said if I ever lose a bet, I'm going to grow it out. Uh, you going to have one, the, the Kimbo slice braids? Just go around the back? Go, yeah. So you just have the cul-de-sac in the middle with the braids yes. on the side? The cul-de-sac. I usually call it the island green because I think I'd have something right around here. You know, I'd be like yeah, 17 at Sawgrass. And then it would... <laughs> hey, do we see Aaron Rodgers this year? There's no I way, right? Will. I believe... No, no. I believe we the will. The torn no, Achilles, I mean, Nate. Yeah, but he had this revolutionary surgery, surgery, right? He's it's sutured up in different ways. It's done like he's never been done before. And on top of that, maybe he's he's you know he's a little theatric and he's he's yeah. showing off a little bit. But little, being out there, walking around, flicking the ball, and 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 walking with a little OG pimp stroll, like mm-hmm. that is all for the people. In all reality, I've been there. I haven't had an Achilles, but I've been there. Doctors are like, stay off your feet. Don't do anything that can put you in harm's way. And for damn sure, don't be standing on it or walking around for three hours. That's with any injury because, one, you can get an injury and swelling is going to happen, and then now we have a setback. So Aaron Rodgers is defying all of the orders just to be out there, which I love. I, if, I, if I'm a New York Jet, I would love to see Aaron Rodgers on the sideline. But I believe he's doing it for two reasons. One, he's sending a message to the people saying, hey, coming soon, like a movie trailer. And then he's sending a message to his team. I know you're paying me a lot. But I'm here for you. I got you. I'll be whatever Zach needs me to be in order for him to play well. My only concern is that we will see him back on the field, but it will be in meaningless games. Because if things continue to spiral for the Jets, and I know they have a good team and all Zach Wilson has to do is take care of the ball, and they can make the playoffs. But what if they're mathematically eliminated, and now it's like Aaron Rodgers is back. There isn't that excitement. One, because the games don't matter, but two – I don't want to see him go out there and get injured at the end of the season. Just I wouldn't even think they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm with you on. That. I don't even know if they do that. But but look, I mean, Aaron does what he wants, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, do sure. you think if Aaron wanted to play in the Jets, we're like, hey man, come on, Aaron, we got next year. <laughs> Aaron's going to do what he wants to do. That's what yeah. makes Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers. You are bang on. All right, uh, Monday Nighter is the three and five Broncos and the five and four Ooh. Bills. And at first blush, blowout, I know. Stay with me here, Nate. Don't read the mind here. I want to do it for the folks. The Bills are struggling. Denver, fresh off its bye. They just beat the Kansas City Chiefs. That's two straight games, three of the last four. Russell Wilson has not thrown an interception in four of those five games. He's fifth in the NFL with a 101.7 passer rating. This is all surplithous information. This doesn't mean anything Mm-hmm. Until it does, is there like mm-hmm. could Sean Payton and Russ be turning a little corner here, or is that just I'm just putting numbers together? I have the Broncos winning this game. I I the only the only thing that could get in the way is the weather, just because it's in Buffalo. Listen, they're both cold cities at this point in the year, but I, I just feel like with how they've been playing and the Buffalo Bills teetering on this self doubt. Um, you know, it's not like, oh, the season's over or, you know, let's pack it in and start booking vacations. But I know what it's like. I'm not speaking for them. I'm trying to put myself in that locker room. You can be as confident as you want. You can wake up every day, practice your ass off. You can talk to the media and say, we got it. There's a lot of season left. We're not hitting the panic button. You can say all the cliche things you want to say. But in the back of your mind as an athlete, you're saying, what the hell is going on? How were we on paper one of the best teams? picked by most to go to the Super Bowl. And now we are struggling to find our identity and losing to teams that we know we should beat. That self-doubt is in a lot of players' minds. And if you have that self-doubt, meeting a team that is finding their identity, that is shedding that self-doubt that was looming over this organization at the beginning of the year with the Denver Broncos, I feel like the Broncos could come in, jump on them early, play some good defense, 
and then have Russell Wilson take care of the ball in the third and fourth quarter in hope that the defense can put the Bills in a position where they turn the ball over. And for anybody that says, I don't know if that's going to happen, I mean, look at the offense. As as good as they've been playing, there's been moments where they just throw the game away. So I have I have the Broncos winning this, and, and it's more about uh, who, the, who these teams – believe they are versus right. X's and O's and players on the roster. The weight of expectations has changed in both of those spots. Like it's crazy. No and, I, and I give passes, like there's a lot of banged up bills on the defensive side of the ball, but yeah. the offense, like I, it's just, they've got to be better period. All right. Uh, this week, Pittsburgh will don throwbacks when they host green Bay. Uh, we all know that stats are like the hangover. They show a lot, but they don't show everything. So super stat, meaningless number, Nate. I had to switch it up this week. Uh, NFL good, good. NFL teams wearing throwback uniforms have won five straight games. Super stat, meaningless number. Repeat that to me again. NFL teams rocking the throwback. Have won five in a row. It It's not meaningless. Guys love throwbacks. <laughs> You could say meaningless. Really? Guys would actually be inspired by wearing the... I, I thought for sure you were going to say meaningless number and berate me. No! No, <laughs> bro. Listen, a, 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 as much as guys love looking at themselves, imagine a dude walking into the locker room and seeing a throwback jersey or a color rush jersey or a jersey from a different era, the 90s or 80s. This okay. is a real thing. Okay. Now, some some teams, some coaches say, hey, guys, we're rocking the throwbacks, so we're doing the color rush this weekend. You got an idea. You're getting your outfits ready. You're planning your socks and your shoes. <laughs> some coaches, they don't even tell you. You walk into the locker room and you focus, you know what I'm saying, you got your headphones on, and then you pick your head up, walk in, and you see the throwbacks. I promise you, it is like a kid on Christmas. Like, you have these grown men. We're making millions of dollars, <laughs> and it's a simple thing like the jersey you're wearing for the next four quarters, and they get so excited. Oh, we got the throwbacks. And that little bit, it just makes you feel good. And that's back to what Dion used to say. Feel good, play good, play good. You know what I mean? The rest is history. So I think it's real, man. It's a real thing. Guys that's love crazy. And it's, and it you're blowing my mind. Monotony. Yeah, it's you're not, Hey, Tim, I am yeah. not BSing you. It breaks up yeah. the monotony of wearing the same old jerseys, and guys love rocking new uniforms. That's awesome. All right, let's start a fight. The greatest, as we go out, the greatest throwback jersey of all time is blank. And if you need me to, to throw out some suggestions so you can ponder the answer to this life's great mystery... The greatest now, now, throwback. Now, are, we, are we are we are we talking football? We're talking football. I was thinking football, but if you're going okay, somewhere right, we'll, else we'll, we'll, on there, no, no, we'll, we'll we'll talk basketball a little later on when the basketball season really starts to kick up. So right. football, shout I am going. Yep, yeah, shout out Kevin. I'll go with the cream sickle, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I just, <laughs> I just, it's just so. It, it it's just so unique and it just grabs you and it's not like a highlighter orange it it is that true like orange sherbet you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i just mm -hmm. i i love but, that jersey man and then and then it has the old school logo too to boot you know what i'm saying yeah. so i'm going with i'm going with that what about you what do you say i uh, i i disagree slightly only because I was around when the cream schools were being played and they sucked. And they were like, terrible. They, they, were, they, were, they were not very good. Yeah, there's a couple, yeah, there are a couple right. dudes. There are a couple dudes. I'm gonna throw yeah, one yeah. out at you to count. Okay, now, I, I like I like the Eagles Kelly Green. I really do. Okay. And, and right. I just think I think about Randall and I think about Reggie. And I think like yep. that's I, I think about Kenny Easley. Mm, uh, the first jersey mm, I ever okay. had, Steve Largent and those Seahawks that we Fire. just saw. Fire. However, however. Earl Campbell, Warren oh, Moon, I know he's and the go fullback ahead. Oilers. The Houston Oilers. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you know, I can't even argue with that. And how yeah. about this? You know, how about them just th throwing the oil tower on the jersey? It's like, it's just the dude showing off like, this is how I got my money, and this is how I bought the team. <laughs> Put the logo on there. <laughs> this, this, this is how we fund this state, son. This uh, it's a shame. I almost want Houston to wear those throwbacks. It's almost like weird that Tennessee owns that throwback instead of Houston. I know. 
I like know. owning another city's past. Like it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that is, man. It's like just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. But when we see him, though, they are fire. They Derek are fire. Henry looks like a monster in those things. <laughs> he looks like He's Earl. He looks like he looks Earl. Like he does look like Earl for sure. Uh, no you doubt. are you are always toting the rock for us, Nate Burleson, and we appreciate you. Uh, let's do this again, week eleven. Enjoy week ten.